Okay. So I want to start off with a quick game, and the rules are simple. Raise your hand if you believe something is woke. Keep your hand down if you think it isn't. First topic, M&Ms. <laughs> Lightyear, the Disney movie. The US military. Lego. Terminator, the dark fate. The Bernstein Bears, a children's book. The live action remake of The Little Mermaid. So these are all things that have been described in a negative connotation as woke because they include or tell stories about women, people of color, or LGBTQ individuals. And these are things that so many people tell us today that this is something we should be fearful of, that these very ordinary stories about very ordinary people are a threat to liberty, to the American way of life, and worst of all, a threat to the children. So when did we begin to think this? So this woke thing must have a very terrifying definition. So I found one that is unbiased, that's not found in the media, mainstream, social, left, right, or center. I found one that's in the court of law. Lawyers for the governor of the state of Florida are defined woke in court as, quote, the belief there are, there are systemic injustices in American society and the need to address them. Hmm. That's not that scary. I thought this was a threat to children. So instead of being fearful of something that people are told is fundamentally un-American, they're fearful of something that defines the very story of America, such as standing up against injustice and fighting for equity and equal opportunity. While this may seem silly, the provocative rhetoric behind wokeness has immensely damaging consequences. From the books we read, to the history we tell, to the rise in hate crimes, what makes our nation, the very fabric of our nation, is being, is being, shred, is being shredded. And under the skies of terms of things like parental rights, critical race theory, and indoctrination, the most vulnerable populations in our society are being targeted. Terms like critical race theory is used to describe any and everything involving race. The term indoctrination is used to rile up anger and political support. The term groomer is used to target the LGBTQ community, which leads, leads, to, rise, leads to a rise in violence. And the term wokeness is masqueraded around to deflect from any societal injustice. Because, you see, it's not about protecting America as many like to say, or protecting the American way of life. It's, re it's really simple. It's about protecting power. Because you see, when you love something or someone, you tell them the truth. And the truth is, I love America, even when it feels like America doesn't love me. But America was founded off the backs of violence, oppression, and suppression. And from that founding, there are still systemic impacts that create inherent unequal opportunities. Because today, where you are born in America, your race, your gender, your socioeconomic status, your ethnicity, and so much more defines where you will start in America and whether or not you will have the resources to succeed in America. You see, and admitting that means in a position of power, you should do all that you can do to remedy these historical wrongs and do the right thing. But it's clear that teaching about history, our identities, and the modern day implications of said history challenges political agendas. From good education, to criminal justice, to voting rights, to maternal health, to reproductive health, to housing, and to so much more, all these issues have roots in our history and need to be addressed. But to see here, admitting that is not some controversial statement that's meant to push an agenda, it's the truth. And you see, when many, many people would rather uphold the privileges and advantages that they have in society, rather than confront this issue with basic empathy and decency. And instead of confronting it with truth and facts and emotion, we're given culture wars that distract from the realities of an unequal society. And a broken system remains just that, broken. You see, as a result, the, the voices that make up this beautiful, diverse mosaic of a country of different people and backgrounds become silenced. 
Who in here today feels like their voice holds no power? By show of hands. I see you back there. <laughs> if that's the case, then why are so many people telling you this is something you should fear? Then why are so many people trying to take our voice away? Books that talk about the very real experience of LGBTQ Americans, of women of, of, women, of people of color, and people of different faith are being banned. History that discusses, that teaches lessons about race, gender, or anything outside of American exceptionalism is being, is being nixed from lessons plans. And conversations that helps us become more tolerant and understanding are being restric restricted in the classroom. NPR reports that in 2021, in 35 states, there were over 137 different bills introduced across the country restricting what teachers can teach regarding American history, politics, race, and gender. And that makes no mistake that this was after the year where racial justice was brought to the forefront of American society. One of these bills is in Texas called Senate Bill 3. ABC News reports that SB 3 can cut public education requirements on lessons like Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement, white supremacy, and the women's suffrage movement. And these laws have very real effects because in South Lake, Texas, teachers were told that if they give a book that discusses the experience of the Holocaust, they need to give a book teaching an opposing perspective. Are you serious? An opposing perspective? Imagine that. Another one of these bills in 2022 is Florida, HB 1557, also known as the Don't Say Gay Bill, a bill that bans, te that bans discussions around gender identity and sexual orientation in, gay, in, in grades K through three. A bill that's designed to, quote, protect children, targets LGBTQ youth who are most likely to be susceptible to bullying, depression, and suicidal ideation. It enforces these harmful tropes that you're not born gay or trans, that you're taught it, that it's not natural and that's not normal. God forbid a kid mentions his Christmas holiday with his two dads. God forbid a teacher talks about her Hanukkah traditions with her wife. God forbid a student who feels attraction to someone of the same gender has those feelings validated. This censorship and these stories are not normal, but they're surging because in 2023, according to the Pen America researchers, there were, as of January 6, there were 32 active bills, more bills than days in the year, targeting these conversations. And one of those bills was SB 42 in Missouri, which moves to ban critical race theory or any theories substantially similar in grades K through 12. Mind you, critical race theory is not taught in any schools. It's a legal theory taught in graduate institutions. But what they mean to say is any conversations involving race, racism, and identity is, on, is a target under this bill. Another bill is in South Carolina, SB 3304, which moves to prohibit instruction that defines United States history as a story defined by oppression. It moves to prohibit the impartial discussion of controversial topics and of oppression faced by different groups in our society, meaning they are equating the stories of oppressors to the oppressed. They're equating those who stood up for their rights to those who worked to take them away. They're equating the groups who define this very American story with those who work to defy their existence. It's clear. This, this language insinuates that teaching about these topics is inherently wrong and divisive, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Teaching them early on normalizing being kind to those who are different from you, it helps us learn lessons of the past so we do not repeat the same mistakes. It builds friendship and kinship. What it does not do is protect America or protect children. You see here, these bills insinuate to children who are black, Asian, indigenous, LGBTQ, who are of different faith, that their story is not a part of the American story, that they should hide who they are. It's, these, the language in these bills say that if you teach the true history of America, then you must hate America. And my is that far from the truth. 
You see, in this picture, I'm photographed with a Tuskegee Airman. Growing up, lessons about my blackness and racism did not find me in the classroom. It found me in life. Many would say if he walked into an eighth grade or a 12th grade classroom, many could ridicule him for telling his story. Why are you teaching an impartial version of American history? Why are you defining America as a racist country? A patriot who fought fascism abroad and stood up against segregation at home can be ridiculed because he would simply speak his truth. You see, growing up, I saw on the TV a proud black president, while at the same time I saw people like Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, and Eric Garner killed in the streets, people that looked just like me and my dad. The classroom was an outlet that helped me process these emotions and understand what I was experiencing. And it's the reason that I'm standing here on this stage. And as I attend a school where I am only one of three black male students in my grade, and there are only roughly three black faculty, I still experience these challenges. And I see up close the power of the discussions we hold and the conversations that we talk about. These stories and lessons can move the tides of nations. It can move the nation to becoming more inclusive, loving, and more accepting. However, there are those who believe that, Amer that there should be one story of America that others conform to. And it's clear that that is not unanimously supported. Over 80% of Americans in a CBS YouGov poll said they do not support book bans about these topics. But that is not stopping a flurry of legislative and executive actions that censors lessons of history and restricts these conversations in classrooms. Everyday people have took up arms to fight back against this issue. Teachers, often underfunded and underappreciated, testified in legislative sessions about the impacts of these laws. Librarians have created free digital websites in districts where books are banned so students can read banned books. And organizations like PEN America keep track of these laws across many different states. Gen Z and students, they went to the ballot box in record numbers in 2022. And in states facing, facing the harshest bans, they stood up, they spoke out, and they walked out no, for all students, no matter their identity. And that right there is not a weak generation in my mind, as many like to say. But that is not enough. Our nation's journalists and leaders must challenge the narratives about our identity and our education that goes unchallenged. And those who support these book bans and the, and the censorship of our voices must, see, must find the empathy within themselves to see the consequences of these laws because our stories matter. Our stories matter. And our love is stronger than hate. Our unity is stronger than div division. And our education is stronger than fear. Chimamanda Ngochi, Ngochi Adichie stood on a stage just like this one and told us about the danger of a single story. And we cannot let the voices in our country be silenced. It matters to the kid with dark skin who looks in the mirror and wonders if that can cost him his life. It matters to the girl who walks in the room as the only one and hears the power of her voice restricted. It matters to the student with a disability who battles non-inclusive spaces. And it matters to all these people. It does. You see, our nation's leaders must take up and stand up for our education, or we can watch democracy wither away. Banning these books and these critical lessons prevents us from being the best that we can be. It creates division and fear. It leads to acts of violence and allows hate to fester. So we must all lift our voices and tell our stories and wake this country up because we will forever be stronger, united in our differences than we are divided in our love of one another, in our fear of one another. Thank you.